Okay, welcome design hackers. Um, this is my first uh, Tuesday video that I'm going to do. In the future, I may just do recorded videos like this and just put them in the group at 2 o'clock Pacific time. I guess that's 5 o'clock Eastern time on Tuesdays. Or I may go live occasionally. We're just going to see how that's going to work out. But the problem with what I do, it's very time consuming. And I run into browser issues and loading issues and stuff like that all the time. So it'd be kind of boring to watch me do a lot of this stuff. But um, going forward, we're going to see how it works out. We're going to try some formats. We're going to try maybe doing some Zoom calls and actually having uh, members of the group come in on the Zoom call. I'm going to go right into their, their funnels and work with them inside the funnels and try to fix their stuff or, or make some improvements to it. So we're going to kind of play with it as we go forward. But I'm recording this on Monday. And the main reason why is I got a bunch of contractors uh, and construction guys are going to be in my house tomorrow and it's going to be banging and all kinds of noise. And so I figured I'm just going to record this a day ahead of time before the crew shows up tomorrow. So a couple things I want to show you first. And if uh, you go into the design hackers group and normally you'd be on the discussion tab here. Uh, but if you come down right down here to files. I've already done a lot of training in this group, and uh, so again, we'll click on files here. I've already done a lot of training in here, and some of it I have put into, um, into these files. One of them right here is especially the new people who don't know these tricks yet, they get hung up on this webby format that is only in the Chrome browser. And so if you want to watch a video on that, just click there, go to YouTube and watch my video right there on how to convert those uh, webby formats. And then also you can scroll down here a bit further and I have a file here for uh, code snippets. I don't have a lot of code snippets in there right now, uh, but I will probably as we go forward put more in. And then also if we go to the next one here, we have my videos. And so I got a whole bunch of videos in here. And again, all my videos for the most part are on YouTube. So you can go to my YouTube channel and find my videos there. You can also got, I got two free training programs here where basically I took my YouTube videos and they're in more of a logical format. So if you're really just starting out, you just go in and you can walk through and watch one video after another and get your site set up or you could even you could even point your customer to them. If you don't want to do the setup for them, you want to just give them the funnel and get them hooked up with ClickFunnels, then you just point them to this training. They can go in there and watch it day after day after day and just set their stuff up. And of course, my Facebook group, I got links to all this stuff in there as well. Just so if you're looking for where you can find a bunch of videos on how to use ClickFunnels. So now, um, let me see here. Was that the... Um, okay, I had two other things. And... Um, the one thing a lot of times people come in here and they say like uh, they're working in the in the columns and in a row and it's like a three column row and they're not able to move that little bar back and forth in the middle and other things formatting issues caching issues that kind of stuff and what I find working with people is they don't reboot their computers enough I'll talk to somebody I go when was the last time you rebooted your computer and they're like I don't know it's been weeks. And I can see on their screen that they got like five different windows open and each one has 50 tabs in it. So if you want to have problems, if you want to not have your site look right, uh, just keep doing that or do what I do is make sure you reboot your computer every single day. So you don't have to necessarily turn it off every night, but sometime during the day, reboot that computer because otherwise you're just going to have problems working inside of this editor or any other editor. It doesn't really matter. Now, as far as asking questions in the group, the best thing to do is to put in a link to the page you're working on. And I should have had this open here, but let me just show you here real quick. Let me back out of here. And uh, when I say to put a link in, we want the actual URL of the page. We don't want the preview link because that doesn't always necessarily work properly. You want to come over here and capture this one right here. So you go there. You could actually go down here too. It doesn't really matter. But we'll just go here, right click, copy link address, and put that in your post with your question. That way I'm able to go in and take a look at your page or anybody else is able to go in and actually see what's going on in your page. If you just put in a picture, we it, it's really impossible for us to see what you're really seeing. And especially for someone like me, 
first thing I do when I get to a page like this, I go right click, come down, click on inspect, and I open up the Chrome developer tool, and I get to look at all the code that's in your site, and nine times out of 10, I can figure out what's going on just by looking at your code. So again, reboot every day, put links in your questions so that we can come in and take a look at everything. So now what we're gonna jump into is, Andrea had a question here, and you already started to see some of the site. So it's a Taming the Wild uh, site, and she found some stuff on here. And I gotta admit, it is a, it is a pretty cool site. I like the way um, they did a lot of the images and the coloring and stuff. And so she had questions about how did they do this right here? And then, so how did they get this uh, logo to split like that? How did they get to this little icon down here? And if you notice on this icon, if you click on it, it actually scrolls you down the page. So it takes you down the page. And then something else I noticed, and you may have, as I clicked on that, is you get this header that comes down. Now, I guess I did not do the animation on this. I can put the animation in, but what I did is I made it so that works. And what happens is as you scroll down the page, there comes a certain point. And I'll be able to find it here, hopefully. Let's see. Uh, come on. There you go. So right. Okay, come on. Right. Well, where is it? Somewhere right in here. There you go. It toggles it up and down. And I always thought that was a cool effect. I've done it in the past. I can't find my old code. I've been meaning to redo it and shoot a video on it. So I included that in this lesson today. So let's just see what her questions were. So it was like, okay, how do you get the second section with the rotating images to break the plane of the first section with the logo so that the logo is coming down into the images? Okay. Now, there's a really hard way to do this, and then there's the easy way. And I started off when I was looking at this, trying to do it the hard way, which is to put this image into the top section. Much easier always, always, always easier to take something from down below and push it up over the top. Because naturally how a page is laid out, anything that is down lower will always go in front of what is in, uh, above it. So the bottom section always goes in front of the upper section. So the best way to do this is I will come in and show you exactly what I did. No code involved in this one at all. So we'll take out that code, uh, the, the negative top margin. So all I did in this element came in, obviously put in the image itself. I made the width 150 pixels wide, which is what the original was. And on as far as width and height goes, 99% of the time, you're only going to want to set a width. Occasionally, you have to set a height, and almost never do you want to set a width and a height because what that's going to do is it's going to distort the image unless you have the exact same aspect ratio as the image has. So generally speaking, always just set your width. We don't have a link or anything on there. And then the only other thing is I floated it to the left, and that is it. So all I have is a couple elements here and um, stacked on top of each other in a standard click funnels row. And then you just go up to settings and you just, in our case here, I put in negative 90 pixels and it brought it up and it looked just fine. Now the next question she had was the Chevron halfway down, how do they do that? So let's take a look at that. And what I did is I turned off the CSS. So when we get done, it's going to look like this or like the original over here. And I think mine's pretty close. Um, it's not exact, but it's close enough um, just to show you how this works. So I turned off all the CSS. And again, in this case here is just CSS. There's no JavaScript or anything like that you have to worry about. And you can see right down here is that icon. And what I'll do for right now, let me just turn that color white. And so you can see it a little bit better. And then what else are we going to do here? We have a uh, top margin. I've just, you know, you one of these things, you just play around with it and you go, okay, where does that top margin have to be so that it will pull it up far enough so that basically the tip of this is right at that intersection. And after working with it a little bit, I knew that that's where it needed to be. It's not like when I do this stuff, I just go, oh, this is how it's going to work. No, this is trial and error, trial and error, trial and error, researching on the internet, pulling up different code snippets, finding different things, going through 
all the tutorials and going, okay, I want, want it to do this. What is the exact function I need to do in order to make it do that? I mean, that's what this is all about. It's about trial and error. So one of the things here, so we want this to align in the center because if we went to the left, it'd be way over here. And that, of course, is not where we want it. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to say scroll to the bottom section because as you saw over here, we had a scroll function when you clicked on that. And so I wanted to replicate that basically. And again, what you're going to see here is I'm using ClickFunnels native elements as much as I possibly can. That's one of the things I've learned after four plus years of coding inside of ClickFunnels is the best way to do this is to use the native elements and then just manipulate them. And more often, manipulate them means turn them on and off. Show them and hide them. That is probably 75% of what we do in here is just grab a native element and then show it or hide it. So, and, and you can do little animations with it and all that stuff, but that's really the basis of what we do. So this says here, hashtag scroll bottom section. So what we got to do to make that work is we come down here because I just want it to scroll down to the bottom of the page here. So whatever section you want to end up being at the top of the page when you do your scroll is the section that you want to do this with. Now, in this case, my page isn't tall enough, meaning this bottom part of this section down here is not tall enough to be able to get all the way up to the top because it's not going to leave blank space at the bottom here. So if it's not tall enough, you will just scroll down till you get uh, to the basically the bottom of the page. So um, well, actually, let me see here. Let me just try. I'm going to do 2000 padding at the bottom and 2000 padding at the bottom. So now when we scroll, we'll be able to get all the way down there. So and now what do we have to do here? I lost where I was. Go back in here. And, oh wait, I'm sorry. I was in this section. So let's go back up. My good mouse died earlier and I got a really crappy one and it's not working very well. Um, okay, so let me see here. So what I did is, and you saw, let me just do that again. So we're inside the section. We're going to come down to the bottom, click on the hashtag. And this had been called section. I just put the word bottom in front of it. And whenever you're naming anything in computer speak like this, normally what you do is the first word, you start it with a lowercase letter, and any subsequent words, you start with an uppercase letter. It's known as camel backing. And so we're going to, you type it in, whatever you want to call this section. You can do this with a row. You can do this with an element even. Whatever you want to call it, you just type it in there. And then what's going to happen, we'll come up to our element again. And when you start off with this, there will be nothing right there. It'll just be the hashtag. And so you come in, you just click on this, and it'll give you a bunch of options on what you can do. Or you can take out the hashtag and you can put in a URL. You can even actually put in JavaScript code there, but basically nobody knows that. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to scroll down and it conveniently put it in here nice and neat for us. It says scroll bottom section. So all we got to do is click on that and now it will scroll down to that bottom section. So now I also set the font size. We'll turn the color back on in a minute. And then as far as advanced goes, we knew from what we had over here that the element that they use, let me go back here to inspect, was a chevron, a right chevron. And you're going to see uh, before this here, let's find it right here, FA, FA chevron right. FA stands for font awesome. Font awesome is this huge collection of these of these little icons and stuff that when you load their code you can use their icons and then you can do a whole bunch of things with them including animate them you can make them spin and do all kinds of other stuff so they're pretty cool you'll learn more about that as you go through building stuff so all we're going to do here is we're just going to come up right here click on this open it up and all i did is i just typed in chevron so it pulls up all the chevrons. I clicked on it, grabbed the right chevron. And for some reason, it's putting in those commas there. Don't worry about it. Um, that's no big deal. And so now we have our chevron there. So now let's go back to our settings and let's turn it back to the color that we had it. Now the next part we have to do is all CSS. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to go into a live page and I'm going to inspect that element to show you 
what each bit of the code does because I can show you the code inside of inside of ClickFunnels here, which is all the blue code down here at the bottom because I have it turned off right now. This little thing right here, that's a comment in CSS slash asterisk. And then as you see up here at the top, you can turn it on with a slash slash asterisk and then turn it off or turn it back. Yeah, turn it on with a slash asterisk, turn it off with the opposite, the asterisk slash. So because I don't have a second one here, it just goes from here all the way to the end of the page. So that's why this is all blue down here. But so I could try to explain to you what this code is, but it's much better if I come in here and I actually show you what this code is. So first thing we want to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to turn off that code. And okay. So now let's go back to our icon. This should be the best way to do it to show this first. And where did the code go? Okay, it's right here. So first thing we want to do is we want to rotate this, this button by 45 degrees. Although it's pointing all the way down 90 degrees, we only want it 45 degrees because we also want to rotate the box that it's sitting inside of. 45 degrees to give us a total of 90 so it points straight down and of course I learned that not because I knew it I learned it as I was playing around with this and trying to figure out how to get it to work So we're going to just rotate that 45 degrees now you see it's like sitting here like an L basically Luckily the background just turned dark you can see it And now I needed to move it a little bit so in fact I'm going to leave that alone for right now because it wasn't quite perfectly centered so I figured okay I got to do some sort of padding or something in order to center it and that's what it came out to is moving at 9 pixels. So now what we're going to do is let's do this. Let's put a border around this element. So here we got a border around it, but you see how ginormously big that is. That's because if you come into your editor, you can see this if we click on it, you can see that's how wide it is inside of the editor. So it thinks that it wants to be full width on the page, and that's what it should be. But so what we're going to do to remedy that is we're going to come in here, we're going to set a width of 30 pixels. Now, what we got here, the first one we did here was border, and then we got two pixels solid and a color, and that color I just came over here and just grabbed the color off of here. In fact, let me show you how I grabbed the color off of there because I did it right inside of the inspector itself. So I clicked on the A, which is what I knew I needed because this is actually a, an anchor text. It is a link. And so up pop the border color, border two pixels here. And then all you got to do is click on the little colored part and it'll tell you exactly what you need to know right there. You can toggle through this. You can get your RGBA, you got your HSLA, which you'll never use, and then you got your hex code. Now you can just highlight it, copy it that way, or you can click on this right there and that will copy the color to your clipboard and then you can just paste it in. Also, if you wanna have the, uh, you wanna do a color picker, this turns on automatically and you just bring it out into your site and you find your color and away you go. Now the problem with it being on all the time is a lot of times you got to turn it off because otherwise you're kind of floating around on the screen with it. But um, so we're good to go there. So we grab the hold of our color. So that's where we got the color from. And then the width, I said, well, you know, and I just kind of guessed, to be honest with you, as I started this, I was like, well, 30 pixels is probably about what I need based upon the size of the chevron and everything. So I just put in 30 pixels and it just happened to work. And so then what do we want to do here now is we want to get this thing centered. Now, it's an old trick in CSS. If you ever want to center anything, you do this right here. You go margin zero auto. So the margin zero means we want zero margin on the top and the bottom. And on the left and right, that's where it's auto. And auto basically means center it. So automatically figure out the width of the element that we're dealing with figure out the width of the screen and just make everything that's not the element margin on either side and just do it automatically. So that's how you can almost always center an element. Text is a little bit different. You want to use a text align uh, element, but that's different. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to make our background color 
whatever color this is. And again, I scraped this off of the other off the other page. So just background color. And you see here, turn the background of that little square, that dark color. And now we got one last thing here. We need to transform this and rotate it 45 degrees. Now, I guess I didn't really talk about that over here. So that's what I did here, the exact same thing. We transform, we're doing a transform, rotate it 45 degrees. So again, if I take that out, it's back to the right chevron, but here we are rotating it 45 degrees. Now, could I have used a down chevron, left chevron, whatever? I guess I could have, but I still would have had to rotate it eventually. So now let's go back up here and let's just kick in our rotate. And so there we go, we rotated it 45 degrees, but it wasn't quite centered. And so what I did is I came back in and I just started playing with some left padding. I knew it had to be padding and I just started playing with that. And anytime you wanna change this and just kind of test stuff, you can just highlight it and then use your up and down buttons and just kind of move stuff around. And it's, it's kind of squirrely because it's, you know, we rotated it two different directions. So you just gotta kind of move it around until it looks about where you want it and then you call it a day. And so that is it. So we got this element here that we put in. We just put in this element right here. And just for, well, let me go back here. So her third question is, um, let me turn that off. What is a hack to do the carousel? So I'm assuming she means by the carousel, she means this slider here where the images are changing out. And as you probably noticed on this page, I did all that on this page as well. As again, it was another project I was been looking to, to work on again. I hadn't looked at sliders for a while. And the way I built this slider is a lot of, a lot of people will use uh, jQuery libraries in order to do it, but that's gonna slow down the load time even more than ClickFunnels already is because they're so full of jQuery libraries. And I just wanted to build it without having to do anything. So I built a text slider right here. This is an image background slider. Now you could also do this background with a, with an Im with a video. And you could just create a video, four, five, 10 slides, whatever you want, do some nice transitions in between. And then you can come over here to settings and go to background and you can do background video. You can turn that on. You drop in your YouTube URL, not the share link, not the uh, share thing where it's U dash TB. Is that, wait, is it? I forget what it looks like. But it's, it's, you want the one out of the address line. That's what I should really say there. You can set everything up and it will put in a background video and it will just loop it right there. So you can do that instead of coming in and doing this type of video. And uh, then I also have this down here where I'm using a slider, but I built it out of native elements inside of ClickFunnels. But that's not for this video. I'm gonna show you that probably next week's video. It's a couple of things I still wanted to work on on it, like uh, partly is transitioning, kind of doing a little fade out, fade in, transitioning on it. And I wasn't quite able to figure that out today, so that'll be for next week. But what I do wanna show you in here is this thing coming in. And like I said, what I need to do is have it uh, pop in down from the top. In fact, Hmm. Okay, so let's do this. Um, what we're going to do is, because I can't show you the code on there, that's right. So let me go into our tracking code. Well, actually, before I do the tracking code, let's do this. Uh, up here, section manage, because I have this hidden. So we will turn it on, and you're not going to be able to see it because it's stuck in the background. So let me go to my CSS. So what I had to do is I came in here and I commented out this CSS because what I did, the way I have this set up, and I'll show you that in a minute, it, it basically is behind everything else and you're not able to see it. Uh, so I just wanted to be able to show it on the screen. So what we have here, again, is just a standard ClickFunnels element. I have a section with uh, pretty much no padding or little little padding on the top. Nothing else, just the same color background as the rest. Three column row. And what I did here, because this, um, when you scroll down on theirs, this was um, an S SVG 
image and I was like, I'm not, no, I'm not going to do that. So I just, you know, copied it and you know, I just, you know, made a little square around it and, and, and saved it to my desktop. That's all I did there. And so I turned it into an image. So dropped it in there as an image and three column row. And then all we're going to do is we're going to come back in here again and we're going to hide it because we don't want it to show until we scroll however far down the page we want to scroll. I mean, they, they go down quite a ways. I think I have mine set right now for 200. It can be whatever you want. You basically want the other header to be out of the way before that kicks in. So we'll just turn that back off. And now let's take a look at the CSS that we have to make this work. And we will get that out of there. And the same thing there. And so I just have this comment here just saying that this, this is the sticky header. So this hashtag container right there, that again was a CSS ID selector for that section. And based upon what they had, theirs was 65 pixels tall. So I made mine 65 pixels tall. Now here's where the magic really comes in. And let me just kind of skinny this down some is we have the position here of fixed. So we're saying we're going to put this somewhere on the page and it's not going to move. So everything else is, you know, you go along and you're scrolling up and down. It's, uh, those things all moved. In this case here, we're going to tell it we want it to be fixed. And where do we want it to be fixed? We want it to be fixed at the top, zero pixels. So it will stay right up here at the top, fixed to the top, zero pixels. And then we have Z index of nine. Now, Z index only works if you use positioning. So you got to have position fixed, absolute, or relative in order for the Z index to work. In this case here, we're just going to say nine. That way we know that no matter what, it'll always be in front of everything else. Now, chance of it be not being in front otherwise is pretty slim, but I just wanted to make sure in case as you scroll down the page, something else uh, were to come in there. So we got that all set to go. Now let's come into our tracking code because we have a little tracking code for this. And everything from here down, that's all the, the slider text, so you don't have to worry about that. And so what we're saying here, is, and anytime you're doing JavaScript, you want to put script here and script here, again with a little slash right there to turn it off. Slash always turns things off like that. And what we're going to say here is document. We're going to start with document. Document means the entire page. And then we're going to do a scroll function. So what it says is if somebody scrolls on this page, we want to check something. And what we want to check is we're saying if, and when you put a this like this inside of this is a jQuery uh, selector right there. If you say this, this refers to whatever called it. So document. So I could just have used the word document right here, but that's just not convention of how you do it. So it says right here that if we have scrolled from the top, so we got a scroll top function greater than 200. So if we scroll down from the top 200 pixels, all we want to do is we want to say here that we want to show that element. And again, this is the CSS ID selector for that top uh, top section that we just built and then hid. So we're going to say if we come down 200 to show it. And if we are less than 200 down, we want to hide it. So that's all it is. Like I said earlier, so much of this is just build out the elements and then hide them and show them. And in this case here, what I really should do is, uh, let me think here. Um, okay, let me pause for a second. Let me try something. Okay, what I did worked here. So what I'm saying here, instead of just show that element, we're going to have it slide down. And I put in here slow so that it'll slide down. And it takes on a slow, I think it's, uh, what is it, eight-tenths of a second, I think, on slow. And fast, you could also put in fast. And then I think that's three-tenths of a second. Or you can put in any number, but the numbers has to be in milliseconds. So a 1,000 milliseconds is one second. So if you wanted to show for one, one second, you or take one second to slide down, you just put a thousand in here without the quotes around it. So now let's just do the other here. And let's just say slide up. And then we're going to go fast. 
and so it'll slide back up fast once we go outside of the 200. So that is all of the code. That's all of the CSS. So let me just click out of here. We're going to save this. We're going to reload our page and see what it looks like. Okay, did I? Oh, I did not turn back on that CSS, so we're going to go back in here. In case you're wondering, you see me clicking up here at the top. If you're doing this, you need to come over here in settings and the custom CSS or tracking code over here. What I did is I built myself a couple little bookmarklets, so it's just easier for me to just click on these because I can even toggle back and forth between the tracking code and the CSS just by clicking up here. And then let me take that out now we got all of our CSS back live now let us save it let's open up the page reload then our little button should work out fine down here and as you recall we put a big tall gray section at the bottom so when we get in there and I come on let's save okay I wasn't playing nice for a minute there um, so now here if we click on our little button we're going to scroll all the way down, and because we made that so tall, now it uh, will be gray all the way down. And, of course, our, our little um, header popped down there as well. So let's, uh, okay, so there it went back up fast. And now there it comes down slow. It might be a little too slow, but it goes back up nice and fast. So either way, you can play around with that. Um, I showed you how to do that. So you can either go fast or slow or put in a number and just have it slide up and down based upon how far down you scrolled. So like I said, next week what I'll probably do then is uh, show you how to do these uh, sliders in here. And then I also saw in here one other cool trick that I think everybody would want to know because I, I get this question all the time is about... Um, uh, what am I saying here? Drop down menus and stuff like that, which I do have a couple of videos. I think there might be in the group. They're definitely on YouTube on how to build different mobile drop down menus, but they don't have to be on mobile. They could be anywhere. So in this case here, you got a menu that comes in from the left side and is triggered by clicking on this. So maybe I'll do a little video on that if anybody is interested. And I also have some training on how to do um, sidebars as well, like you would have on a WordPress blog. So I'm going to leave it alone for now. If you got any questions, just let me know.